on their rocky top road trip, losing at Tennessee on Wednesday, trying to pull off an upset here against Memphis. Second half action underway. Yeah, staying in that 1-2-2 two, two zone. And you've got a you've got a big guy this time, Dimitri Rivers at 6-8 on the point. Great job by Davenport. After the Jeremiah Martin missed, he got the rebound and put it back in. That's four now for Keevan Davenport to go along with seven rebounds. Good energy play to start the second half for Memphis. We had two ties in the first half. Worth four minutes and 19 seconds. Again, Mercer's largest lead 11. It was six for Memphis at one point. Ringer working down low against Two Tigers, and Mike Parks had the good defense, and then the steal, and a runner for Ethan Stair, who has been a thorn in the Tigers' side. That's double-figure scoring now for Stair. Got injured much of last year. He started as a freshman, so he's accustomed to playing, knows what to do. He had a sports hernia and missed the entire season last year. Davenport for three, and now Keevan's starting to heat up. He has seven and pressure from Memphis here. Tubby immediately uh, telling Davenport to get up there on the ball. Full court pressure. He's also looking for energy. He wants to keep this tempo going, pick up the, the pace. Well, for the kids watching at home, you saw that great play there by Dimitri Rivers because he could run the baseline. It was a made basket, so he could move, and that's what he did. He got it into the hands of the point guard, Strawberry. Memphis still in a man-to-man. -man. Five now on the shot clock. They might have to get it off. They say no. It was a shot clock violation. So Memphis with some good offense and then some good defense. And Bob Hoffman not happy with that possession. Yeah, you don't like the mental mistakes. Know how much time is on that shot clock. Make sure you at least get a shot up. That's the frustrating point. And for Memphis, that's a good defensive effort. It really was. Did a good job. They've come out uh, quickly here in the second half and uh, got off to a good start. Ten turnovers now for the Bears. They average only 12 on the season. Davenport feeling it at that time. Well, if anything, John, Memphis is used to having a come from behind. They've done it a number of times this season. Yeah, but eventually that formula creates problems. You just can't continue to find yourself a double-digit holes, particularly at home. Good defense by Martin, and he gets the steal. Rivers behind the defense, and he's fouled by Steph Jelks. A good foul, though, for Jelks. Rivers was looking to, as, um, yeah, Rivers was looking to finish. But against UAB, they were down 24 in the second half, came back, and couldn't complete the deal. Yeah, good outlet pass to Rivers. Ideally, you'd like to be able to use your left hand there rather than the right hand. But he got the contact, so he'll get two free throws. And the reason using your left hand, that's away from the defender. Two for Rivers. He is a 69% free throw shooter. But the point being, Little Rock, they had to rally to win the game. They had to rally to win. Toronto Kentucky was an amazing comeback. It was it was one where they were down 16, 16 I believe, in the in first, first half. half. Exactly right. But again, you, you continue to get down by those deficits. You're flirting with disaster, unable to come all the way back against UAB on the road. Right. And uh, that's just not a recipe uh, for long-term success. Good job by the Bears to break the pressure. Four-point game. Jelks fought wow. away. That's a pretty three-point shot. He has four of them in this game. The lead back to seven. Eight of 14, eight of, eight of 15 now from three-point range. Mike Parks, Parks Jr. Jr. Good job. This is Parks' Jr. best job offensively since he's uh, well, played well against, uh, I guess, Alabama, but that's the first game, so he's playing uh, his best basketball since uh, here in this one against Mercer. You had the feeling that maybe Tubby gave him the ultimatum. You either step up or you're going to find yourself on the bench. He has nine points. Well, trust me, when you, when you have a loss like Memphis did against UAB on the road where they really struggled from the get-go, never were able to really make it close and competitive, uh, you better be ready to produce quickly. And sometimes uh, a, a loss like that will show the team really uh, cause them to wake up and create
create uh, urgency. Even though it's early in the year, uh, you want to start seeing improvement. You don't want to start continuing to see these large deficits. And Memphis looking for more energy and more consistent play out of all the team. New backcourt for Mercer as Kilby and Cohen make their first second half appearances. Rivers baseline, Jay. Rivers with the hustle. Parks with great hustle. Third opportunity. Bruton Jr., no. Loose ball, they're diving all over the place. Good effort by both teams. They're going to call a tie-up. Got multiple guys hitting the deck. Both coaches have to be pleased with the effort for both their teams. It'll be Mercer basketball when we return. Both teams laying it out on the floor here in Memphis with Mercer up by five. Five-point game here at FedEx Forum in Memphis. Mercer leading the Tigers 36-31. Really, this start to the second half, very reminiscent of the start to the first half, where Memphis got some good hustle plays, got some rebounds. They have four rebounds so far in the first four minutes of the second half. Yeah, Memphis found themselves down by nine at the break. They whittled back into this, uh, down by five. So uh, starting to do a good job of, of slowly cutting into that Mercer lead. Marcus Cohen, freshman, backup point guard. A lot of bumping going on with Martin. He picks up his dribble now, in trouble. Nine now on the shot clock. Cohen gets it back. Runner. Well, that's a tough shot, but Rivers off the mark. Davenport, they're going to call block. And Keevan will go to the free throw line. Memphis with a good job, Greg, that time of getting the rebound, pushing the ball up the floor before Mercer could get back into their zone. Jeremiah, Mile, Meyer, <laughs> Jeremiah Martin kicks it up to Davenport. His quickness created a little bit of a mismatch, and he gets a couple of free throws, makes the first. But again, sometimes in transition, if you push the ball at the floor, you can beat a zone before it can get a chance to set up. If it's not there, you don't have to force it. You can kick it out and restart your offense. Davenport just 52% on the season, nails two. He now has nine points, which ties Mike Parks Jr. for team high honors. He has seven rebounds to go along with that, so he's on a double-double watch, had a double-double in his first game with Memphis against Alabama. Nice pass. jump pass from Cohen inside to Jalen Stowe. This time he finishes. Had a couple of opportunities in the first half. In fact, you wanted to bring up the vocabulary I used, Bunny. We'll talk about that in a second. Rivers behind the defense was trying to jam it. Yep. And he gets fouled. Yeah, we used to say gimme. Bunny, that must be one of those uh, geographical terms. Bunny, chippy, gimme, all what, the same thing. Water, water. <laughs> So three team fouls now against the Bears. Tigers yet to be whistled for one here in the second half. And Rivers returns to the free throw line. Memphis now six of seven. 
Seven. Job inside to Rivers. It's a nice over the top pass. Mercer has only been to the free throw line one time in this game. They're 0 for 1. So Memphis outscoring the Bears now seven love from the charity strike. Well, part of that also is that they, they've uh, you know, put up 14 three point shots, too. That's a lot from the outside. Rivers down with a half dozen. Memphis quickly in the full court press. Oh, he's got some good speed. Easily breaking that. Kept his dribble alive. Very smart. Good play. Nothing there. Got to kick it out and restart your offense. Back to a one possession game. Rivers for three. We got Jeremiah Rivers on one side, Dimitri Rivers on the other. Nice looking three point shot there. They are 9 of 15 from beyond the arc. The Bears shooting a sizzling 60%. But it should be to no surprise. We talked about that at the outset. That was altered. That was Desmond Ringer who got up there and altered that Jamario Rivers effort. Kilby. Wow. Kilby has his second triple. He has eight. He only averages four, and the lead balloons back to nine. Memphis is getting drawn in on these baseline drives, and then what Mercer's doing is kicking it out to open three-point shooters. Got to know where those shooters are at all times. Jamal Johnson back in the game for Memphis, and he promptly drills his second three of the game. Six, that's his average. Jamal Johnson pulls the Tigers to back to within six. A lot of movement, a lot of screens. Got to really do a good job communicating. He'll be in traffic. Are. Three second violation as Mercer turns it over to Memphis. That is the 13th turnover now for Bob Hoffman's team. George Strawberry is going to check back in for Marcus Cohen, the freshman who. Giving his coach some good minutes. Also, Kareem Bruton Jr. back in for the Tigers. Tubby Smith is 2 0 all time versus Mercer. He was a coach at Georgia when they beat Mercer and a coach at Kentucky when they knocked off the Bears. Relatively quiet night for Jeremiah Martin. Just one of five for the field. Jump stop. Goes with the left hand. And right on cue, like he was listening. Jeremiah Martin now has five points. That was pretty. He just told you to take that. Yes. No, but you're right. Memphis needs to see more offense from him because he's been the consistent offensive performer. Wow, barely a, a five-second call. They nearly got that call. Instead, they get a turnover for Mercer. So the pressure is starting to result in turnovers now for the Bears. Four-point Mercer lead. They had a nine-point lead at the break. Had a nine-point lead just a second ago. Memphis, to their credit, has not been uh, afraid of coming back from deficits. They've had to do it quite a bit. Rivers this year. counted. Excuse me, John. And the foul. Boy, Rivers being authoritative. No hesitation. Went right up with it. Nice entry pass. You know you've got a player right behind you. No front side help. As you mentioned, Rivers recognized it, took it right up and over, and it'll get an and one opportunity. Kilby called for the personal. That is his first, but that's 14 fouls now against the Bears. The Tigers, no fouls here in the second half. That could come into play. Tigers looking to trap. Good job by Strawberry, kept his drive alive, stayed in the middle of the floor. That's where he had the most options against pressure. Good feed. Great pick and roll right there with Strawberry finding Ringer, who made a beeline for the basket. He now has four. Great execution by Mercer. Johnson for the tie. In and out. Well, look at the hustle from both these teams today. It's been fantastic on both sides, and Memphis Will retain possession. Good hustle by Jamario Rivers, who now has nine. Checking back in for Mercer. 
Steph Jeltz and Dimitri Rivers. And Rainier Thornton will make his first second half appearance for Memphis, giving Keevan Davenport a blow. Davenport with nine, Rivers with nine, Mike Parks Jr. with nine for the Tigers. Tigers have not led since halfway through the first half. Came out on the block real quick today. A lot different than their game Thursday in Birmingham. But we're not, not able to keep it up, and they turn it over right there. So Mercer has the basketball when we return. 11.49 remaining. Game at FedEx 4. Memphis trails Mercer 46-43. Keevan Davenport so important to this Tigers team. Starting to heat up. Yeah, he's been active in the second half, Greg. Did a good job on the boards, as well as from uh, outside. Active inside. Good effort. He's got nine on the season, averaging just under 14 per, per game. The second leading score for the Tigers. They need him to be consistent at the offensive end. There he is, currently getting a breather on Tubby Smith's bench. Seven rebounds to go along with those nine points in 23 minutes of action. Once again, a little pressure from Memphis. Now they'll back off. Strawberry averages 10 a game, only three points playing here today in front of his pops. Second on the team in points per game. Second and three, second and rebounds. All he has is a triple so far. So Jeremiah Mark's done a pretty good job. A lot of contact. They're going to whistle Jamario Rivers for the foul. So Rivers on Rivers. Memphis version gets the foul. And Jamario says Crimea River. His first personal, first team foul against the Tigers in the second half. Bodies falling all over the place. Oh, great feed from Strawberry. And then Jelks on the pump fake is fouled. That's foul out number one. Greg, as you mentioned, that's a good, good look for Jordan Strawberry. Jelks with a nice pump fake. It's brute to clear out. Jamal Johnson picks up the foul late. Once again, uh, good inside look, execution. Nice for Mercer. Jokes is 83% from the free throw line, and I think you can tell with that stroke. One more for Jelks. Nobody really in foul trouble. That was the second on Jamal Johnson. There's a bunch of guys with two, but nobody with three fouls. 14 now for Jelks. He leads all scores. Stair has 11. They have 25 of the 48 Mercer points. The Bears back up five. Bruton Jr. from the corner, and maybe that will get the junior college transfer from Georgia going. Five points now for Kareem. That's just his second day three on the season. Well, he was open. Uh, he did a good job squaring up and give him credit. Still confident enough to take the shot. This time he found the range. More importantly, Memphis back within two of the Mercer Bears. Tigers are 5 of 21 from beyond the arc. Mercer shooting a blistering 10 of 16. They do a lot of backdoor cutting. Yeah, again, communication. You must you must really communicate with your teammates where those screens are. Make sure you get through them. Good closeout right there by Bruton Jr. on Jelks. May have affected his stroke. Memphis has a chance to tie it up. Take the lead, though. Here. No, Martin Short. That's a long three, four or five feet beyond the three-point range. That shot's available anytime. That's a little frustration on Jeremiah Martin's part. He really hadn't gotten a lot of good, easy looks tonight. 0 for 4 from three, 2 of 7 overall for the junior leader of this team, Jeremiah Martin. Under 10 down to play in the second half. Again, a one-possession game. Good tie-up by Rivers. They're going to call foul. So Jamario gets another foul called on him. That's three team fouls now against Memphis. Look pretty good, that defense. Yeah, if you come up from underneath, you get away with some contact. When you come down on top, that's sometimes that's an automatic signal to the official. If there's contact, if there's a foul, whether or not it really occurred or not. If you come up from underneath, sometimes you get away with it, even if there is contact. Martin the rebound off the Rivers miss. 
Oh. Mario Rivers down the lane. It's a block. Yes. And he draws the foul. Yeah, Ringer was outside yep. of the restricted area. And Rivers once again will go to the free throw line. Good job by Rivers. Recognize it. Contact occurs. Nope, they're going to call that an offensive oh, foul. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, saw it the other way. Wow, so Rivers, okay, will go the other way. Yeah, he'll get his third. That would have been Ringer's third. So instead, Jamario gets the third foul called against him, the first player in this game with three. More importantly, Mercer continues to cling to a two-point lead that they can add to this trip. They have not allowed Memphis to catch up with them. Quick hands by Jeremiah Martin, almost got the steal. Sometimes it's a mental thing once you get the breakthrough. Stare. Blew by the freshman, Jamal Johnson, the bucket in the bag. Stare, good job. His coach really high on him. That uh, Stare, a, a real good athlete. 6'5", sophomore, can do a lot of different things. He has not been shy. Again, uh, started some as a freshman, so he's comfortable with that role. And a foul over the back by Ringer, so Ringer does pick up his third. Just happened to be on that rebound. Good position for Rainier Thornton. What's interesting is when they get Rion Holland back, you're going to have an incredible sixth man if Ethan Stair continues to come off the bench. Unless they want to want to put him into the starting lineup. Well, again, what they're missing, they're missing their leading score, 20 points a game, shoots 55% from the field, shoots almost 100% from the free throw line. Almost 100%. Missed right. one all year, right. uh, which is staggering. Two to one assist to a turnover ratio, and he's uh, shooting about three points, uh, better than 50% from three. Yeah, it's not like he's shot five free throws. He shot 29, he made 28. Uh, Malik Rhodes back in the game for Memphis. Yeah, that's a lot to, to be uh, without tonight. Yet they find themselves uh, in, in the lead. Uh, less than 10 minutes to go in the game on the road. So this is, a, this is a good ball club. Again, we talked about it. One of two teams in the country that starts five seniors ordinarily. Holland would start. Uh, once he uh, gets back from his injury, he will be. So that'd be their fifth senior to start. That means something. That's a lot of uh, familiarity in terms of those guys playing together. That's a lot of confidence. You've been through a lot uh, when you've been uh, through, the, through the wars that many times with that kind of group. Well, the air mailed that one. Bruton Jr. feeling it after he made the last one. Pressure from the Tigers. Good job by Mercer to break it. Next foul by the Bears puts the Tigers in the bonus. Two more by Memphis. We equal the favor there. Right down Broadway goes Cohen. Just cannot have that straight line to the bucket move. Just to break down defensively. Nobody helped out once Cohen got by his man. Runner by Bruton Jr. doesn't go, and a rebound by Stowe. Yeah, like the Red Sea parted right there, but everybody was on their man, and nobody recognized it. Well, you got to communicate. Now, sometimes you're going to get beat. That's just, that's just the way that it works out. That's when you really got to rely on your teammates to help you out, at least to slow a guy or turn him where you can get back and help. Wow, Cohen does it again, this time down the right side. He did it with his left hand on the last possession. Just like that, Memphis had a two-point deficit uh, with a chance to tie or take the lead. And Mercer, to their credit, they've kept their composure. Now they've stretched it back out to, to eight again. Contact by Martin. It's an offensive foul against Jeremiah Martin. Things are starting to come unglued for the Memphis Tigers. Mercer leading by eight. Mr. Cohen with a beeline to the hole.
Bob Hoffman talking to his team during the timeout in his 10th year with the Bears. And boy, he has accomplished an awful lot. You talk about a guy who is a giant killer. First of all, when this team played in the Atlantic Sun, 2013 and 14 coach of the year, now part of the Southern Conference. Took his team to the NIT tournament in 2014, which we'll talk about in a second. But also under Hoffman, Mercer has 10 wins over schools from Power Five conferences. He has really done some damage. In 2014, he led Mercer to the upset over the Duke Blue Devils in the Raleigh Regional, where Memphis was also playing. They won their game that day against George Washington. I was at that game. And Mercer was a giant killer. Then I believe they lost to Tennessee in that next game. Now, I really liked uh, Coach Hoffman. I like his demeanor at practice. His, he's a very clear communicator with his team on what he expects. And they're very responsive. Done a very good job. Good coach. Davenport. And the Tigers settling 5 of 24 from beyond the arc. They got a smaller, quicker unit in there with three guards in Bruton Jr., Martin, and Malik Rhodes. Memphis with enough time, but you do not want to allow Mercer with another spurt where they really open this thing up. Good look inside from Kilby to Jalen Stowe, and Stowe draws the foul. He'll shoot a couple free throws. Even Davenport whistled for his third personal, and that is the seventh team foul against the Tigers. Stowe, another North Carolinian. 6-4, he has to play a, a couple of different positions, doing it very well. Again, another energy guy. He comes off the bench, gives Mercer uh, some immediate impact. He's strong, he's decisive. Coaches like it when you go to the bench and, and, and you get some kind of pick-me-up. Whether it's offense, defense, a spark, whatever you're looking for. That's what you're looking for for guys that are coming off the bench. Only the 16th free, th free throw shot in this game and sixth by the Mercer Bears. Desmond Ringer will check back in. Good job by Jalen Stowe, who has four. He averages only three. That's just down by double digits again, down by 10. 6.57 to go in the game. That's still plenty of time. No, no, no need to panic, but you just. Your Memphis, you had it within two with the ball, never could get all the way back. And now Mercer, to their credit, had kept their cool composure. They've found a way to stretch that two-point lead out to 10. Rivers and Johnson back in for Memphis. The question is, can you have the patience and get good shots, or are you going to start jacking up threes? Rivers inside the arc. I believe that's a two, and it is. Well, you don't want to settle, but he's able to knock that one down. Yes, that shot is available. Now, when Mercer goes man-to-man, -man, Memphis can get the ball inside if they're patient, but they've really clung to this zone most of the game. 11 points now for Rivers, first Tiger in double-figure scoring. Also has five rebounds. As John mentioned, Tigers have not been able to get over the hump in the second half. They've gotten close, but then Mercer makes a big shot. Jelks. Loose ball, they battle for it. They're going to call a jump ball. And it'll be Mercer basketball, the alternating possession arrow. Jelks has hit four threes, but that one he left a little short. Mercer now 10 of 19. Shoot 42% from beyond the arc on the season. Again, Mercer with a good job of movement. They really give you a lot to think about defensively. Constantly moving in back screens. Stair recognized the advantage he had with the height over Jamal Johnson. Backed him in, but he missed the shot. Memphis down eight could cut into that. Dangerous cross-court pass. Johnson, corner three! His third triple, he has nine, and suddenly the Tigers within five. Hanging around. Got to find a way to get back across the whole way. But, but again, defensively now, must, must really play solid defense and not allow easy looks for Mercer and limit them to one shot per possession. Long three by Strawberry, in and out. Davenport out jumps Ringer for the rebound. Eight now for Davenport. Next Mercer foul will put tight the Tigers in the bonus.
Martin working baseline. And he's fouled, I believe, by Ringer. And if that's the case, that'll be his fourth. Nope, they're gonna call it on Ethan Stair. In any case, both teams in the bonus. That's a shooting foul nonetheless. And here comes Jeremiah Martin to the free throw line, who is one of two on the day, 73% on the season. Corey Kilby checks back in for Ethan Stair. This to make it a one possession game as we are exactly five minutes away from the end of the second half. Fans starting to sense again the momentum switch. Memphis with some pressure. Well, that's exactly where you want to have a trap. Dead corner for Memphis, unable to come up with it. Seven points now for Jeremiah Martin. Rainbow three by Kilby off the block. Rivers, good outlet pass. One on three, nothing there. Good job by Rhodes. Don't have to force it. Martin working baseline, lays it up and lays it in, and the Tigers within one. Jeremiah Martin stepping up as he usually does for the Tigers, and a timeout called by Bob Hoffman. Not happy with that defensive possession as Martin just drove baseline and scored the two for the Tigers. 4-19 remaining in the second half. We have a one-point game here in FedEx Forum. run over the last two and a half minutes. They made their last three shots from the field. Meanwhile, the Bears, no points in the last 238, and Tubby Smith's team is within a point. Yeah, Tubby Smith has to be pleased. His effort has been good. Execution hadn't always been perfect, but the effort has been there. Jeremiah Martin uh, has uh, found the offensive end here a couple of times in the last two possessions. Dimitri Rivers with the inbounds from the sideline, yeah, guarded by Jamal Johnson. A little different spot to throw it in. Rivers working against the freshman Johnson, and Martin tried to pull the ball, but he also pulled his arm. Tried to just take it away. From him there on that baseline move, and Jeremiah commits the foul, so free throws for Dimitri Rivers, at least a one and one right now. That's the 18th foul against Memphis. Rivers is a 94% free throw shooter. He's 17 of 18. And by and large, this is a very good free throw shooting team. Mercer, team wise, they shoot it better than 70% on the season. They got a couple guys, uh, Rivers being one that shoots it better than 90%. I ask, uh, Coach Hoffman yesterday, what does he attribute to all this good free throw shooting uh, you know, to? He said, well, uh, I can't give you the secret. I don't want to, don't want to spread the word. Uh, <laughs> but he said, we do spend a lot of time on We work in a lot of situations where you put pressure you know, on guys to make sure that they can do it, uh, trying to simulate as much as you can game conditions in practice. But they Jelks, emphasize it. Jelks called an for an over the back on the rebound on the rare miss there by Dimitri Rivers. So each team now with eight fouls, and free throw shooting, while it has not been a factor really throughout this game, will probably be a big factor in the final four minutes and eight seconds. Well, particularly if, if it, it, it's close. Right now it's a one possession game. Memphis has been very good, as we mentioned. Coach Hoffman's club, typically very good from the free throw line. Rivers one and one, and he gets the bonus. Jamario 69% coming into the game has now hit on all six of his attempts. Well, he's a big reason why Memphis is 12 and 13 from the free throw line as a team today. One more, and Rivers drains it. Again, here's a guy who was struggling against Burby, against UAB in Birmingham. No points. And Tigers have tied it up again. Good effort. Good effort by Memphis to, to climb back into this game. Again, they were down by 10 just a couple of minutes ago. 13 and 7 for Rivers, and again, 7 for 7 from the charity strike. Ringer in trouble as he picks up the dribble. Five down on the shot clock. The other Rivers, Dimitri with the runner. That's a good shot because Davenport was up to try to alter that shot. 
Half dozen now for Dimitri Rivers, and a lead once again for the Bears. They just won't give up that lead in the second half. Again, ball movement important for Memphis. Got to be active at the offense, even without the basketball. Martin from the corner. And here come the Bears as we approach three to play, leading by two. Very deliberate half-court offense for Bob Hoffman. Good ball movement. Strawberry now pulls up at the free throw line. Tigers have some numbers here. This is a three on two. Rhodes. Airmailed that three. Out of bounds, though, off Mercer and a reprieve here for the Tigers with 24 ticks remaining on the shot clock. We have a timeout on the floor at FedEx. Four of 241 remaining, and it is a one-possession game. We have a good one here at FedEx Forum in Memphis. Pounce are pretty happy about it, although the Tigers do trail the Bears by two, 59-57. Mercer's largest lead was 11. The Tigers led in the first half by six, but they have not led in the second half. Give Mercer credit. Every time Memphis has gotten close, they've come up with the answer. Now on the shot clock. Now under 10 for Martin. He pulls back for three. Nine on the shot clock. Takes that three. You okay with it? Got time. You, you, you can get that shot anytime you want. Memphis got to be careful for settling because they're not getting any rebounds when Mercer is able to go that zone. And they got to go play defense for you know, 25, 30 seconds at the other end. Rhodes guarding Strawberry. Inside the bucket in the bag. Wow. That's Steph Jelks. He's been killing the Tigers from the outside, but he goes inside. He's got some beef, and he's got a three-point opportunity. Well, the key is Strawberry's penetration. He gets by, splits the defense. Rivers has got to come out, possibly to help. And Jelks able to muscle it up, gets a chance for a three-point play. And he does. 17 now for Jelks to lead all scorers. Yeah, if, you're, if you're Rivers there, you're going to foul him. Foul him. Prevent him from shooting the, the shot there. And he wasn't able to do that. He got a three-point play out of it. Yeah, so be, he leads back to five. Be decisive with your decision, whatever that may be. Under two to play. Right now, the Tigers got to figure out a way to attack. Do a little bit better job. Everything's on the perimeter right now. Martin spins. Wrap around past the Rivers for the dunk. How did he see? Jamario and quickly Tubby Smith calls a timeout. 30 second T.O. We'll keep it right here with the Tigers down a possession. 
That's an impressive play penetration wise by Jeremiah Martin got the defense to commit to him and as you mentioned he knew where his teammate was. Nice assist again goes right to the defense you got three guys and commit to him. Somehow he knows where Rivers is going to be on the baseline. Good pass and Memphis with a quick time timeout. They'll get a chance to set up their defense. Also talk about what they may want to do offense on their next possession. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Next up for Memphis, they will host Sanford back here at FedEx Forum, and then we'll have the game against Bryant on ESPN3. That'll be Saturday. That Louisville game looming for the Tigers as well on the 16th. Played that game's in New York, the Louisville game. It is indeed. Neutral court. Always a great place to play basketball in uh, the New York area. A lot of great venues there. Tigers will back off. The pressure. Now Strawberry crosses the timeline with Rhodes, who's played some significant minutes here down the stretch defending. Now, if you choose not to foul, and it's too early to foul, make sure you don't foul once the shot clock gets inside 10. Don't give the double benefit. Time to run it down. That's exactly what happens. Davenport just being too aggressive over the back of Ringer, and that'll be the fourth now against Davenport. So all of a sudden, Jamario Rivers and Keevan Davenport with four, and that also puts the Bears in the double bonus the rest of the way. So here's Ringer. He's a 90% free throw shooter. Short arms the first. Eight percent. Still pretty good on a regular basis. Makes a second. Like you said, these are some good free throw shooters on this team. You just don't want to allow them to take that much time off the shot clock. And it's at this point the game clock. You bail them out. And then a chance to go to the free throw line to score. Memphis running basically. Some weave action on top, trying to get it to somebody with a one-on-one -on -one opportunity coming off a handoff. Rhodes for three. Go. Look at Davenport. He got bumped from behind, and he almost put it back in. Great position to steal that rebound. Keevan Davenport now with nine points and ten rebounds. A chance for a double-double here. Good effort. Rhodes with a shot no good, and Davenport 6-8 able to go up and in. And as you mentioned, Jelks got him pretty good. Memphis with a chance to make points, cut into the lead, but at time with the shot clock and the game clock, stop because the second free throw is important because that allows you to set your defense. Bruton Jr. checks back in for the Tigers, replacing Brewer, and that one's in and out. Tough one there for Davenport, who has his second double double as a Tiger. 10 points, 10 rebounds. Well, we're about at the score of the football game today. Double overtime <laughs> game, believe it or not. What, 100 points? Plus that game, 1,400, 1,500 combined offense. What an exciting showcase for the American Athletic Conference in their championship football game. Great defense by Davenport. Oh, Strawberry, they call a jump ball, but he got away with a, a forearm shimmy yeah. right there. Memphis yeah. has the possession arrow, though. Yeah, definitely gets away with a clear out. Watch this. Okay, goes Good up call. and down. Right? Here it comes, right here. Yeah. Yeah. You could have easily called that foul. I don't know what he's complaining about. Now, it wasn't a turnover. He jumped up, came down with it. There's a 30-second timeout. With 35 seconds to go in the second half. Bob Hoffman not happy. Next up for Mercer. Florida A&M at home, then they'll hit the road once again. They'll play at LaSalle against the Explorers. And they'll meet the Crimson Tide and Avery Johnson's team. Memphis, of course, playing them to start the season in and, Annapolis. And Mercer has only play, already played Central Florida this year, UCF. So they've already jumped into the American Conference once. This will be their second game as an uh, American Athletic Conference member. But they're not afraid to play the big guys. You talked earlier about how many big games that uh, Bob Hoffman and Mercer's teams have won through the years. And right now, Tubby Smith trying to design a, an important, important play because they want to get a good look. You do not have to shoot a three this possession, but what you do want to get is get a high percentage look. If you don't make it, you're in pretty good rebounding position, or you're putting pressure on Mercer's defense, possibly to go to the free throw line. Don't bail them out with a quick long range shot just because it's open. Sometimes you're open for a reason. And Mercer, to their credit, for the most part, uh, the guy up top on that 1-2-2 zone 
He's been a 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", variety, so you got to shoot over him. Also, a uh, big wingspan to get in the passing lanes. That was Tubby Smith, by the way, who called that last time out. That was a full timeout. They have one left. Bob Hoffman has two left for the Mercer Bears. Possession arrow is to Memphis if there's another tie-up. Bill Jacobson just making sure everything's okay. That's actually not Bill there. That's Brian Shea. And here we go. Yeah, Five actually, second differential. Actually, the possession arrow will now be Mercer. It doesn't change until the ball's passed in. Okay, so Bears get it on the next tie-up. Johnson, long three. Wow. Was that clear? Did Tony Smith want Jamal Johnson out of that timeout to take about a 25-footer? That's open. I'm, I'm not sure that was the play, but uh, if it was, credit uh, Tubby Smith. If not, credit Jamal Johnson for having the willingness to take that shot, but I do not think that's the play that they called out of, out of the timeout. At any rate, it's got this game tied up with a big basket from the freshman. Well, Jamal Johnson has hit four threes for 12 points today, none bigger than this one. And, and, the, and the reason I say I, I don't think that was designed because when he caught it, he looked to pass first. He, he, were, he didn't square up immediately. When the defense didn't come out on him, then he was comfortable taking the shot. This game now tied for the fourth time. But remember, in the comeback win over Northern Kentucky, how instrumental was Johnson with those two huge threes late in that game? And then in the Northern Kentucky game, Memphis did a very good job denying shots. Again, watch Johnson. He'll hesitate just for a minute, looks, and then he shoots. If that was a design play, I think he'd immediately look to shot. I think he was surprised that he was wide open when he came up. And to his credit, nobody was on him. Went ahead and took the shot. Most importantly, Craig, he made it. Tigers now 7 of 30 from beyond the arc. That's only 23%, but that was a huge triple to tie this game up. Meanwhile, Mercer 10 of 21, which is nearly 48%. Timing is everything. And uh, again, Memphis has found a way once again to come all the way back. They can't get the lead, but they found a way to come all the way back. Mercer with an opportunity uh, to take the last shot of regulation, and that's really what you want to do. Uh, unlike Memphis in the first half, where they took the shot a little bit too quick, which allowed Mercer to get the ball down court and got a three prior to regulation ending. That was big. Very consistent hustle is what we got right now from, from Memphis so far in the early portion of the season, there see Johnson hitting the three. But what we don't have is the consistent scoring. So when you have a guy like Jamal Johnson starting to feel confident and knocking down threes, and even Mike Parks Jr. today inside doing a lot more than he has done in the past, scoring nine points. They need contributions from just about everybody. Right now, sitting at 63 points, they average 64. Make that, they average 68, so they're still five points under their season average. Mercer averages 79 and a half points, and the Tigers have held them right now to 63. Okay, okay. 26.2 is on the clock. Bill Jacobson doing a great job coming over and explaining that to us. Yeah, he said he had two guys that saw it uh, in 26.2. So that's where it comes from. They talked about it. Get it right. Okay, so Mercer can work it for a final shot here to try to win it. Fouls would put them at the line for the double bonus. She got to be real careful. Got to communicate now. Come off screens. Ten seconds to go. Strawberry picks up his dribble. Now seven. Stare, a lot of dribbling, three seconds. Strawberry's gonna have to hoist it, he does. Good defense. That's an excellent half-court defensive effort by Memphis. They did not panic, they didn't leave their feet, they did not allow any dribble lanes. Very, very good de defense at the most critical moment of the game. On the flip side, you're Bob Hoffman. You cannot be happy with that possession. A lot of dribbling going on, but Memphis has forced overtime here at FedEx 4. We'll take a timeout. Overtime is on the way. Memphis and Mercer all even at 63. Good ball. It'll be Ringer 
and Davenport jumping. Now you got to start to look at the foul situation for the individuals. Davenport, Jamario Rivers, four. Jelks has four for Mercer. And Davenport wins the jump. Memphis wants to keep the same recipe they've had the last three or four minutes. They've gotten good looks, put a lot of pressure. Same five starters for Memphis other than Jamal Johnson in for Mike Parks Jr. Rivers, jump hook. Nothing but net for Jamario Rivers, who has had himself a terrific game. 17 points to go along with seven rebounds, and Memphis has its first lead since the first half. And Memphis continuing to stay man-to-man -man defensively. Did a real good job as we talked about in that last possession of regulation. Rager triple teamed, almost quadruple teamed. Picks up his dribble. Strawberry. Long three right in the face of Kareem Bruton Jr. Second triple for Jordan Strawberry with his dad watching, who has to be excited about that. Mercer back up by a point. His dad, by the way, Daryl Strawberry. Here at the game. Now Memphis with a chance to reclaim the lead. We've had three lead changes, and Bruton Jr. is fouled. That'll go against Dimitri Rivers. Actually, they call that on the stair. Bruton able to split a couple of defenders. Stair call for the foul, reaching in. So here's Kareem, 75% on the season from the free throw line. Good look, good follow through, nice arch, rotation. Most importantly, makes it. Got it all tied up again. 15 of 17 from the free throw line. One more. And Claxton, Georgia native, and he drills it. Seven now for Kareem Root Jr. Tigers back in the front, 67, 66. And both teams in the double bonus. Strawberry from the corner. Got wow. another one. That's with Davenport at 6 8 extended, where he's got to pay attention to that. And great concentration by Strawberry. Wow, relatively quiet all game long. He had three points in the last two possessions. He's knocked down two threes. Johnson. Big rebound. Rivers the put back. No, he's fouled. It'll go to the free throw line once again. Jamario Rivers just playing out of his mind today. I really like his determination. Johnson unable to get it to go. Jamario Rivers corrals it. Good job going straight up. Got the free throw line for his efforts. And that is going to go against Steph Jelks, and that's a big loss. Steph Jelks, who has 17 points to lead all Bears scorers. He's hit four threes, and he has just fouled out of the game. And they're going to bring in Ryan Johnson. Also, Kilby's going to replace Stair. That's a critical loss there for Bob Hoffman, Steve. Yeah, again, that, that's a senior that's been through the wars, understands what to do. He has, at times, really an impact in the game offensively. He's strong. I mean, he's a solid. Solid 6-6 performer, important for the rebounding inside and an energy player for the Mercer Bears. Rivers goes one of two. One point lead for Mercer as we approach three to play in overtime. First overtime game for both these teams this season. Whistle away from the play. And if that's Rivers, That's going to go against Keevan Davenport, but either way, if it was Rivers or Davenport, that's it. So Keevan Davenport has fouled out of this game with 10 points, 11 rebounds, his second double-double as a Tiger. But he is done after 35 minutes of action. You can see the frustration on his face as Mike Parks Jr. replaces him. So a key loss for Mercer in Jelks and another key loss for Dubby Smith in Keevan Davenport. Right here, Thornton checks in, not Mike Parks Jr. And Ringer knocks down the first. One more for Ringer. 
Six points, make it seven. Good stroke on those free throw shots. And once again, Mercer up, but it's a possession game. Thornton trying to use his physicality now to set some screens for Memphis. Bruton Jr. for three. Well, they were holding onto the arm of Rainier Thornton as he went for that loose ball. And no, sure whistle. were. Wow. He almost had the rebound with one hand, but now Memphis uh, still got time, 2:23. But they really want to limit one opportunity. No fouls. You have to play defense, make them take a shot, and then limit it to one. Do not put them on the free throw line. Shot clock inside 10. Strawberry looking to drive. Pump fake off the window. Oh, the ball gets stuck. It'll be a jump ball possession arrow Mercer. Wow. The ball gets pinned off the shot. And again, that's a, that's a jump ball is what you default to there. And they, Mercer gets it back with, a, with 20 seconds set now on the shot clock. So they can bring it down uh, under the two minute mark. I guess you can call that a, a nice break for the Bears. And they're going to put a full 30 on yeah, that. Yeah, wow. That's right. So a full 30, possession four, Mercer up by three, 71 68. They can be a little more deliberate now. Two minutes to play in this overtime session. It's so important, Memphis, you let your teammates know where those screens are. A lot of screening and moving away from the ball for Mercer, trying to rub guys off to get open or backdoor cuts for easy layups. He can go right at Rivers with his four fouls. Bruton Jr. called for the personal. And you let 22 seconds Rivers. go off the shot clock, so right. now you're down to a minute 40, and you put Mercer at the free throw line. Just you can't make those combination of mistakes. Everybody clap your hands. Again, if, if you're choosing the foul, that's fine. Do it early in the shot clock. The idea is you miss the free throws and you, you get more possessions. Well, here's the other problem. Dimitri Rivers just doesn't miss too many free throws. He's missed one in this game, but he's missed two all season long. Tubby Smith and the coaching staff. Try to avoid a second straight loss. They battled all day long. Eight points now for Dimitri Rivers. And the lead back to five with a minute 33 to play. Memphis not in the must possession trip, but back to the important possession trip. Bruton Jr.'s grabbed as he cut across the lane, and he'll shoot free throws. So I said and if earlier right. that free throws I thought could play a yeah. big part in this game. Well, here we go, double possession, or uh, double bonus rather, and it's been that way for quite some time now. And if you're Mercer, that'll drive you crazy, stopping the clock to allow the team to hit free throws to catch up. You make both of these, you're one possession down, plus you get a chance to set your uh, defense. One more for Bruce Jr.'s three for three. No, exactly right, John, you're, you're Bob Hoffman. Just, just play some good defense for for 30 seconds or however long it takes before they shoot, you're up five. Yeah, well, Bruton was also cutting away from the basket. You know, he's going to, to, to the ball. Loose ball and Kilby runs it down as Bruton goes one of two. Four point lead, Mercer with the basketball. Strawberry, top of the kick. Memphis on the break. Martin right at the defense, and he lays it in. And it counts. Plus, he draws the foul. How about Jeremiah Martin exploding with that speed down the lane? No hesitation after the missed shot at the other end. What he's so good at in traffic is that little left to right splits the defenders. Again, you get caught in no man's land if you're Mercer. You're not playing defense, but yet you don't get out of the way to avoid the contact altogether. That's a mental mistake. And Jeremiah Martin, his credit, got a chance to put Memphis within one. How he's able to sidestep that defender and not charge the defender is, is beyond me. He has that knack, and a three-point play is completed. And Memphis back to within one as we're under a minute to play in overtime. Mercer really looking to rub guys off screens to get the dribble lane to the basket or a backdoor cut. One thing you don't want to give up here is a three. Johnson. Got a charge. Got to be. Got to be. Is. 
good defense. How about Memphis coming up big defensively, although Rivers now is in some pain. That is Ryan Johnson, who came in, I believe, after Steph Jelks fouled out. And he commits the Cardinal sin, the charge. Yeah, you can just see that out of control. Uh, a good, good job defensively by Memphis. Aware coming up with a big call. And the right call. That's a good defensive play. Memphis with a chance now to take the lead. Stair checks back in, replaces Johnson. And now Mercer has to come up big defensively. Rivers is, is limping a little bit as he runs down the court, but it seems like he'll be okay. Jamario has been tremendous with 18 points and eight rebounds. About a four second differential between the shot and game clock. Memphis down one. Overtime here at FedEx Four. Jamal Johnson, the freshman. Now under 10 to go on the shot clock. Gotta start attacking. And Tommy Smith calls for the timeout. He did not like the way that possession was going, and he calls the timeout. We'll come back. 11.4 remaining in overtime. Mercer by one. During the break, they added 0.5 to the clock. So you go from 11.4 to 11.9, but there's seven seconds remaining on the shot clock. All right, what do you do? You're Memphis here, you well, seven seconds. Well, you're trying to get to the rim. You're trying to get to, to, to a basket, or you're trying to put pressure on them defensively off the dribble, also possibly picking up a foul. But you've got to put pressure on their defense. In the meantime, Bob Hoffman calls a timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. So he saw what Memphis was maybe trying to do. He wants to set his defense now. Sure. Well, uh, again, if, if you're Memphis, you're trying to put pressure on the Mercer defense, either getting to the rim. They're probably going to come out in some type of zone, maybe some type of uh, you know chasing out top. Uh, but you're trying to, if, if there's contact close, create the contact. Free throws are fine. Just got to be able, you know, to make them. If you miss the shot, you need to be in rebounding, offensive rebounding position where you can crash the grass and try to come up with an offensive board. And for Mercer, you do not want to foul. This is where you got to move your feet, got to really play good defense, and then you must, must block Memphis off the boards. You cannot allow offensive rebounds if you're Mercer. Change this to a 60-second timeout. Mentioned at the outset of the broadcast. The Tigers have only met Mercer twice. They're 2-0, trying to avoid a first loss. But the last meeting was way back in 1990-91. Also met him during the 74-75 season. And Tubby Smith all time, 2-0 versus the Bears. A win at Georgia, a win while he was the coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. Kilby, Stair, Rivers, Strawberry, Ringer on the floor. For Mercer, Rivers, Rainier, Thornton, Kareem Bruton Jr., Jamal Johnson, and Jamario Rivers for Memphis. It'll be Martin with the inbounds. All right, looks like we got a man look initially. Let's see if they drop back in the zone. Got to get it in. Boy, Martin no struggling there to get it in. Now five on the shot clock. Bruton Jr. picks up the dribble now. Two seconds. Martin's going to have to hoist it. He does. And he's fouled. Wow. There's your contact you're looking for. All right, give Jeremiah Martin credit because he sensed the defense was a little out of whack and he created that. It should be three. Jordan Strawberry commits the foul with about a second on the shot clock. Let's take a look at it. Again, just a little too close. Martin, to his credit, leans right in. Not much contact, but just, just enough out of sorts to pick up the foul. And that's, 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 that's experience. Well, you learned from a great former Tiger and Andre Turner. Here's another. The speedy Marcus Cohen will check in for Corey Kilby. Tigers now with the lead again. Six times this game has been tied, six lead changes. 
Now, it's five and a half seconds to go. One more here for Martin. That's plenty of time, though. Plenty of time to get down and get a good shot. Martin makes all three, 75-73. Now, if you're Memphis, you cannot foul. Strawberry. Can't foul. Strawberry's going to try to take it right to the Gotta rack. A lot of contact. Oh, oh wow. they call a block. Wow, looked like uh, Thornton was set. Let's take a look and see if he flinched at the end. 1.2 seconds remaining in overtime, and they call a block. See if he moves at the end. Wow. Well, where was his feet? It's tough to tell from that angle. Yeah, was man. he out of the restricted yeah, area Yeah, or that's not? right. That's right. He may have been. Looked like he got there and he was set. In either case. But give Strawberry credit because he did the exact thing he must. He took it right to the Memphis defense, forced a call. 78% on the free throw, on the, on the season from the free throw line, and he makes the first one more for Jordan Strawberry. That's Kilby checking back in. Ten points now for Strawberry. He's hit a couple of big threes here in the second half. One more to tie it up with 1.2 seconds remaining. And he does. That's big. Clutch free throws for Jordan Strawberry. And now a timeout called. Memphis calls the timeout. 30 seconds remaining in overtime. 1.2 remaining. Well, give Strawberry a lot of credit because he did the one thing that you must do with that much time, five and a half seconds ago when he got the ball. Plenty of time to dribble, kept his composure. He attacked the defense, took it right to them, creates the creates the contact. He's forcing a call to be made. One way or the other, a call has to be made when there's contact like that and the guy goes down. And uh, in this case, he gets it to go his way. And most importantly, he steps up and makes free throws when they matter most. All right, Memphis, draw me up that 1.2 seconds to play play here to win it. Well, obviously, you want, you want to get a clean pass down. Uh, actually, you really wouldn't mind creating a foul. You wouldn't mind creating a foul if somebody's just close enough where you can lean in. But the main thing is you got to be able to catch it uh, basically rotating towards the basket. You also better watch for a, a quick steal and shot from, from Mercer, too. So you got to be careful. Well, as long as your pass is, is past midcourt, it's almost going to be impossible for them to catch it turn the other way. And it looks like they will back off of Rainier Thornton. Although they're trying to get Mason Green in the game, the six foot ten freshman. I guess he would guard the inbounds here. Because you're not going to give him a free toss down the court, I don't believe. Or it looks like they will. It's almost now going into like a prevent defense on a Hail Mary, try to just knock it down. Okay, so once again, great job by Bill Jacobson explaining that Green checked in. He has to stay in the game now. They can't pull him back out. So this is a, an open inbounds here from Thornton. Fires at the bar. And it's a little too tall, and we're going to double overtime here at FedEx Forum. What a game it has been. What a day it is. What a battle here at FedEx Forum. As Memphis and Mercer are tied at 75, the effort from both teams has been outstanding. Nobody wants to walk away from FedEx 4 with an L today. Well, I give both teams a lot of credit for their execution down the stretch, Greg. First of all, Jeremiah Martin creates a, a foul, hits all three of his free throws under pressure, and then you got to give Mercer credit. No panic. You've got uh, Jordan Strawberry who takes it the length of the floor, creates uh, a contact. Uh, the block is the, is the call, and he makes two pressure pack free throws with a little over a second to go. That'll be Rivers versus Ringer because Davenport, who won the first two jumps, in this game to start the game and start the second half, or start the overtime session, he is out of the game. He fouled out. Now to start the second overtime session, it's Rivers winning the tap. So Memphis been pretty good on the jump ball. Yep, and Mercer back in their 1-2-2 two, two zone with Ethan Stair out up top at 6-6. Six, six. So you got you got a tall player with a, with a wingspan. It's not gonna make it easy to shoot over. You also can get the passing lanes. Six down on the shot clock. Martin. Driving baseline, and he draws the foul. What a play by Jeremiah Martin. He was stuck. He didn't have anywhere to go, and he kind of did the old back step and then went forward and drew the foul. Watch this. Well, good job. Kept Ready? alive. Back. Everybody relaxes. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and he's very talented in traffic. 6'3", but uh, he can go up in traffic strong enough to get a shot off. And he's been money at the free throw line when they matter. Well, Martin now with 16 points. Along with six rebounds and six assists. Yep, right on his average. And he adds a 17 point. He's now nine of 10 from the free throw line. The Tigers overall are 24 of 28. That's impressive. 
and they've once again reclaimed the lead. And we talk about Mercer's free throw shooting prowess, yet it's been Memphis that has done such a good job at the free throw line in this game. We've had seven lead changes. We've had seven ties. Memphis basketball playing a double overtime game like the Memphis football team did. Strawberry in and out for that quarter three. Almost got it to go down. Bears now 12 of 26. Still shooting very, very well from beyond the arc at 46%. Tigers looking to add to that two-point lead. Getting a little weave action on, up top. Martin will now try to create off the dribble. Man-to-man -man defensively for Mercer. And why not? It has really worked. Martinell, three seconds. Johnson's going to have to shoot. He does. Yeah, that was not a good possession because Memphis got too late in shot. Right near Thornton, right there, to clean up the trash, draws the foul, will go to the free throw line. So Rainier Thornton, who came in after Davenport fouled out, will get a chance at the free throw line, shooting 44% on the season. Yeah, Rainier Thornton, one of those nine Georgia products that we talked about playing in this game collectively between the two teams. And he knocks in the first. Much free throw shooting by Memphis. One more for Rainier Thornton. 6'7", 235 pounder. Memphis to make it a double. Uh, Memphis is a two possession game, I should say. Memphis has got a 13 point advantage at the free throw line. That helps to offset the difference in, in the threes. That's 15 points in, in advantage wise for Mercer in the three point area. Five more threes than Memphis. And a whistle away from the ball, and they're going to call Thornton on the foul there. And that'll bring Ringer to the free throw line. So Desmond will get his opportunity. And he's three of four tonight. Well, we do have confirmation. First time ever the football team and the basketball team have played in uh, overtime games on the same day. Football team with the uh, double overtime uh, down in the American Athletic Championship game in Orlando against UCF. And right now Memphis in the midst of the second overtime here at home in the FedEx Forum. And hoping for a different result as it was a tough loss for the Tigers in football, hoping to get that W here in basketball, trying to prevent a two-game losing streak as they fell last time out against UAB. Three minutes to play in the second overtime. Johnson. That ball off of Brook Jr., who looked to get the offensive rebound out of bounds to Mercer. And very deliberately, Jordan Strawberry walks it up the court. Still be thought about it for a second. Now inside a ringer, double team. Loose ball, and Jeremiah Martin ran into Dimitri Rivers, and that'll send Rivers to the free throw line. One of those. Hustle plays, but just yeah, couldn't, quite, couldn't hold up. Couldn't quite get there. But it all starts with blocking people out. You got to be able to block guys out. Memphis got four guys around that couldn't come up with a rebound, as you mentioned. Just a, a couldn't avoid the contact, and as a result, Mercer back to the free throw line. And Rivers now four or five with one more to go. They look to tie this game up for an eighth time. Good block out there by Johnson. Yep. Now that's the way you got to do it. He rode his man all the way out. The result, he comes up with a big rebound. Memphis out rebounding Mercer, but only by a single board, 38-37. Good look at the zone once again. Mercer in. Memphis going to take their time before they attack it. Just don't want to wait for the shot clock to get down inside of 10 before you really start your offense. You can be selective. Johnson may have had that shot altered. Loose ball, tie up. Possession, possession arrow to Mercer. Well, it seems like I've said that like every time. They are switching it, right? They are. <laughs> they are. Trust me, you got a few people around here that would be helpful, uh, <laughs> would remind them if they weren't doing that. This happens to be every time there's that loose ball. But just remember that they don't change the arrow until the ball is inbounded. As soon as that ball touches, it'll go the other direction, which will be Memphis's ball on the next alternate possession. 
Two minutes remaining in double overtime. Alongside John Albright, I'm Greg Gaston. So glad you could be with us on this Saturday afternoon in Memphis. Plenty of basketball. Kilby. Way off the mark. And now Memphis will slow it up. Leading by a point. Yeah, I'm a big fan of getting in your offense. You don't have to take the shot, but go ahead and get your offense. You flow and run your sets. That way, if you, if you do need to look for a shot, you're already set up here. Martin, a lot of dribbling, steps back. Doesn't get the bounce. And out of bounds off Memphis. Boy, bodies all over the place. That's the way it's been from the get-go. Good effort from both teams. Jeremiah Martin with the look, doesn't go. Action coming right at you. Goes off Rivers. And Mercer will have the ball with a minute 14 to go down by one. Rivers, and I'm talking Jamario Rivers, but probably Dimitri Rivers as well is going to have to ice down that body after this game. He has been diving and throwing his body around all game long. Mercer with a chance to reclaim the lead with a minute to play. Strawberry by Martin. No. Johnson the rebound and a whistle of foul against Memphis, and it may be Rainier Thornton. Nope. It's going to be Jamal Johnson. Strawberry strong in the bucket. That's a tough shot. Pretty good defense. Memphis unable to keep Ryan Johnson off the boards, and Jamal Johnson. Comes up with a foul. Well, Ryan bricks the first one. He's 60% on the season. One more for Ryan Johnson, junior college transfer from Tallahassee Community College. One more. He drills that one. We're tied again. Inside 50 seconds now to go in the game. You know, Tigers got to get into their offense because, again, they can't work it down for a final shot. There's still 40 seconds left in this game. Get a good shot here, get a good possession, and hopefully score, and then put the pressure on Mercer. Got to get in their offense now. Inside 10. Too much dribbling. Martin, five, jump stop. Kicks it to Bruton Jr. Blocked by Johnson, but contact as well. And Bruton Jr. will go to the free throw line. That was a smart play by Kareem because he was moving. He well, gave him an outlet. Well, the other thing is Jeremiah Martin gets the defense to commit to him. Nice job. Bruton comes to the backside and a strong play. That was a good look. Once again, we'll have some free throws. We will take a timeout. 27 seconds remaining in double overtime. Memphis will shoot free throws when we return. Well, it was nice and sunny when we started the game. <laughs> now nightfall on the folks here in Memphis in the Mid-South as we are knotted up at 79. Great aerial view of the FedEx Forum in downtown Memphis. Over there to the left, there's AutoZone Park, home of the Memphis Redbirds AAA baseball team. Yeah, nice day in Memphis today. A uh, great day for the, uh, the marathon that, was, that occurred downtown. So, uh, good day for runners. Bruton Jr., the chance to give the Tigers the lead once again. He's now four of five from the strike tonight. Memphis 27 of 31. Most significant minutes, I think, for Kareem since the opener against Alabama. And he now has 10. Memphis by two. And a chance here for Mercer to possibly force a third overtime or win it with a three. Strawberry's done a good job off the dribble, putting a lot of pressure on Memphis when he's had the ball. Inside, Ringer backing down, down with our Rivers. No call with the contact. Great job by Ringer as he gets the two to tie it up. Now Memphis with a chance to win it. 
Here comes Martin, seven seconds, and now he looks over to Tubby Smith, who wants a timeout with 5.7 seconds left. So Mercer not going for the three. They were going for a smart two, and they had Ringer with the size advantage over, over Rivers. That could have easily been a foul called on Ringer. Could have been one on Rivers, which would have knocked him out of the game with five fouls. Instead, the official said play on, and Ringer ties the game up. Well, once again, players are making plays on both sides. Smart play, going to the basket, getting a good high percentage look inside. Ringer able to convert, and for Memphis, again, this is where you're going right at the rim, if you can. Now, again, I expect Mercer possibly to come out in that 1-2-2, two, two, force an outside shot. But Jeremiah Martin's already found a way to create contact from the outside. So you got to be real careful if you're Mercer. Uh, and if you come out, you, you might want to try to deny Jeremiah Martin the ball. He'll actually pass it in. See if they don't pass it right back to him. But right now, you got 5.7 uh, seconds. You're looking to straight line in some fashion to either create contact or a quick, a quick look. Martin with the inbounds, and he'll get it to Rainier Thornton. He gets it back now. Four seconds to go. Martin drives, contact. They're going to call a block. Exactly what we talked about. As soon as he passes in, right back to him. Mercer was not prepared for the straight line drive, and Jeremiah Martin creates contact. This is exactly what we just talked about. Going right at it. Johnson moving just at the end. Jeremiah Martin's going to get a chance to go to the free throw line with 2.8 seconds to go in this game tied. Johnson just a split second late. And Johnson has fouled out. With all due respect to Ryan Johnson, that's not the guy Bob Hoffman wants in there, but he lost Stefan Jelks earlier in the game. Martin gives Memphis the lead once again. Boy, how clutch is Jeremiah bit. Well, again, that's our heads up play because he passes the ball and he's the inbounds passer. They give it right back to him. And before Mercer even thinks about their defense, he is off already off his left hand, which is primary hand, creating contact. Now, enough time if you're Mercer. 2.8 seconds to go, Tigers by two. Here's the inbounds, they have trouble with it. Now they get it to Strawberry, who calls the timeout with 2.1 seconds left. Smart play there by Jordan Strawberry. So they'll have time to get off a shot, you would think. Bob Hoffman's gonna draw it up. But getting back to Jeremiah Martin, how clutch he has been. He's now the leading scorer in this game at 19 points. He's hit 11 of 12 free throws to go along with seven rebounds and six assists. Impressive. Again, you're looking for some type of alley-oop play, play here, a back screen or somebody at the rim or somebody flashing out. And what you don't want if you're Memphis, you must not have contact. You cannot create a, or, right. or commit right. a foul. And if, and if you're Mercer, anybody's too close, you're leaning in. You're creating contact, forcing a call from the official. Otherwise, you've got time to catch, turn, and shoot. Or if it's an alley-oop play, you got a chance to catch, obviously, and put it in. You saw the reset. Mercer does have a timeout. Memphis does not. Do you go for two to tie it, or are you going for three to win it? Kobe's in the game. He can shoot threes. Stair can shoot yeah, threes. You don't have to worry about stealing or gambling for anything here. That's not what's going to hurt you. You don't want to be extended too far out. Pass to Ringer, and he calls a timeout. And Hoffman's not happy with something. I, I don't know what he's upset at. Maybe. I'll be honest, I, I would have not even come across half court. Again, that's not going to hurt you. You get, you get beat with a half court shot, it's not your day. What do you think Hoffman was upset there with? Let's take a look at it. He may have thought there was a foul reaching in. Let's take There's a look Springer. right here, right here, right there. That's what, he, that's, what he, that's what he wanted, a foul called right there, see? Boy, that is really taking a chance if you're Rainier Thornton. Yeah, again, just swipe at the ball You like don't that. have to do that. you got to be, you, you got to be thinking. Again, you're the double bonus. If you allow them to go to the free throw line, good chance they're going to tie it up. And that's exactly what Bob Hoffman is upset about. There you see, but you, right there, you're reaching in. That's that's a gamble. He's going to call timeout anyway. You don't want to reach down and possibly pick up a foul from the official. But nonetheless, we'll have 1.3 seconds to go. That's still enough time to catch, turn, and shoot, or an alley oop opportunity. Well, they'd love to have Steph Jelks in the game, who's hit four threes, but he fouled out. Watch for some back back backdoor screens. You really must communicate. Again, one last look right in front of coming right at Coach Bob Hoffman. 
That looked like a ball, though, from that end. Yeah, but coming down like I know, that, you a, never it's know. A, it's, a dangerous, it's a dangerous chance. It's not necessary. Like it's not necessary. That's the bottom line. It's not necessary. Well, and there's what he's there's what he's talking about. You're looking at risk-reward. You're absolutely I, right. You're absolutely right. All right, the officials are still over at the scorer's table. I guess they're making sure the clock that's is right. right. The time. At 1.3. That's, 1 .3. that's All right. right. So, again, you're talking about backdoor screens here. Here we go. Here we go. Once again, we're, we'll take a look and see if we can see the clock. I think it's pretty accurate. It may be 1.4. It's pretty close. But yeah. let's let's talk about Mercer right here. What play is Bob right. Hoffman filing right. up here? here? Here are the options. You, you can have a guy rubbing off the screen that's coming to a wing shot where he's got time to turn, catch, and shoot. That's an outside shot. Or you got a chance for a back screen. If somebody goes to sleep and gets picked from the back and there's no backside help, you can actually have an alley-oop where a guy's going to the basket. But the main thing is you do not want to foul here. Right. No, you don't have to steal. You two, 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 two doesn't kill you. Three ends the game. Two things. You don't have to steal, and you don't have to block the shot. Too many times guys go for block shots in this particular situation, and you come up with a foul. All right. Ethan Stair, certainly a dangerous shooter. He's one for three with threes. They got 1.8 on the clock, so they've adjusted 1.8. It'll be Strawberry with the inbound. All right, watch for screens. Right now, you, somebody's going to rub off a screen. That's what you're looking for. Strawberry having a tough time to get it in. He finally does. The ball got tipped. Here's Strawberry getting it back. No, it's after the clock. After the clock expired, it will not count. And Memphis is going to survive, and I mean survive, as they knock off Mercer in double overtime by the score of 83 to 81 in a game that featured nine lead changes and nine times this game.